the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I'm pumped about this tonight, SAS Australia, 7.30. Oh, yes. Channel 7. It sounds brutal. If you're weak, easily offended or physically unfit, leave now. You're now in charge of a live grenade. Oh, you're trying to do kill us! What the f*** are you doing? Don't know if it's a good idea giving celebrities a live grenade, but one lady that uh, will be... Uh, well, this is what... Well, you know what? We talk about this quite a bit, but SAS Australia, I think it's a great opportunity for people who have, you know, done wrong in their lives to actually go on there and prove themselves. Mm-hmm. Show Australia who they really are. And one young lady who did spend a bit of time in a Colombian prison is Cassie Sainsbury. She joins us now. Cassie, Cassie welcome. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Nice. Cassie, one of the parts of the show is, of course, that sort of interrogation room where you're expected to share more of your story. Um, Do you reveal a lot in the interrogation about your experience? More than I wanted to, I think. It has a way of just drilling into you. Screaming at you, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. it's tell me or that's it. Tears for you? Did you a lot of tears? Lots of tears. Probably about six years worth of tears. Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. So it was quite, was it a, a therapeutic and relieving to... Get it off your chest in a sense? I would say a weird therapeutic way of going about it, but definitely a good way to get in front of the traumas that I had. And because obviously in life, normally there was no way I was going to find myself in a situation similar to prison life. So there were situations in the course, um, particularly with the DS, that were very confronting. And it did help me just get through it. Yeah. 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 Did, did it trigger a lot of things in you? Because I know that um, mm, from yeah. what I've been reading you've been um, diagnosed with PTSD and there's, you know, a lot of a lot of things that follow the experiences that you have been through. A part of me would imagine that you might have got a lot of positive out of SAS but there would have been things that made you feel you know, kind of threatened or fear and all of those things that you've dealt with before that perhaps weren't so positive? Um, (laughs) I think it was nothing that I expected. Obviously, everyone goes into SAS thinking, oh, you know, it's not hard. TV show. Yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, Instantly, I was transported. Yes. Right. Straight okay. back. Yeah. Straight back to prison. Straight back to prison. Oh my right. God. Can you can I can I ask you what's one of the what was one of the lowest points in prison for you? Were there moments where you feared for your life, Cassie? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I um What happened? I had a lot of beatings. Yep. I got beaten up a lot. Did you? I got stabbed. Um, Whereabouts? I've got two stab marks on my arms wow. where I was stabbed. Um I went through a lot of things that I wouldn't wish on anyone ever. Why were you stabbed? Um, I had a lot of enemies. Yep. Um, and obviously being the the gringa <laughs> in a Spanish prison, it um it just brings that attention of, you know, rich white girl, um, mm-hmm. need to guess bully her down until that's it. Did you stick up for yourself? No. No, no you couldn't. At the start, you didn't know anyone. No, and I didn't know the language. No. Like oh you would gosh. have people yelling at me. And I'm like, what? Uh, oh no. So you Cassie, you ended up getting released from prison yep. because of COVID. No. That's not true. No. no. I um I was released because I had completed three fifths of my sentence. So between physical time yeah. um and the discount that I was doing as an English teacher, I managed to obtain a parole which at the very beginning of my process with my judge, she said she would not give it to me. Right. So she bit by it. bit, I um I managed to wear it down a bit and um I guess show the real me to her as well that I wasn't just a process or a case yeah. in front of her. Um, I do remember the day that I spoke to her when she's like, you know what, send in your paperwork and I'll give it to you. And I was like, <gasps> oh god. Do you, so did wow. you did you end up pleading guilty? Yes, I did. Right. Okay. This is and, and look. Can I also say is that when you're young, and I mean, we all make mistakes. Your mistake obviously was a lot bigger than anyone mm-hmm. else. Now you know you're going to cop it going onto this show because you're exposing your life more. A lot of people would say that they have no remorse for you and what you did. But I do look at elements. I always believe in giving people a second chance. I think now there has been a silver lining out of this because you found your partner and your soulmate. Was that in the prison or no? You met her in Colombia when you got out? Yeah, I met her in Colombia when I got out. Um, Nothing to do with prison at all. Yeah. 
And it was actually really funny because it was... We were starting to be friends and then I kind of was just like, you know what, you need to know this. Yep. Told her absolutely everything. I'm like, well, there's the door if you want to go. And she's like, you know what, everyone has a past. Everyone makes mistakes. It's what you do now with your future what that will make you as a person. Yeah. So, um, and it's been a process. I thought prison was hard. Coming back to Australia. Oh, it was really hard. What, because yeah. of the public, do you mean? Or? The public and just trying to pick my life up and continue. Yeah. It's not been as easy as one would like. Um, you know, I get criticised, you know, why do you go in the public? Why are you all over yep. the news? And I'm thinking, first of all, I don't go looking for it. No. <laughs> I might put something on Instagram and all of a sudden it's in the Daily Mail. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and not only that, like, it's just my life is broadcasted everywhere yeah. and I've tried to be in the shadows, I've tried to go unnoticed and it doesn't work in my favour either. You know? Can I, can yeah, I kind ask? of can't keep anyone happy, really. No. There's a couple of things I want to ask. One was the interview you did, I think it would have been 60 Minutes. And you couldn't remember the pin to your phone. Remember that? I do remember that. So now, uh, um, on reflection, you you obviously knew the pin to your phone, but there really wasn't the evidence on your phone that you were suggesting was there. Um, So, okay. Here we go. We're getting into the gossy stitch. Um, All right. So, I didn't know the pin at the time. Yeah. Right, I was given the opportunity to go to my prosecutor's office yeah. and there we went through all the possible pin codes that I had had. Now, for some reason, the one that I did know that I had on that phone, it wasn't working anymore. So they rescheduled the meeting and they got in some texts to go through the phone with me because at this point... I was going to accept the plea deal yep. because I was told I didn't have a choice, really. Mm. Um, but when we went back for the next meeting, my phone had disappeared. Gone. Yeah. When you got caught, what was that moment like? Can you try and describe? Like, I mean, you'd obviously, you're regretting what you did at that moment, and then you've made that mistake, and nine times out of ten, I would assume the person doesn't get caught. And that's why you take the punt, because the upside's obviously financial. So when you actually find yourself in a situation, is it just complete disbelief or can you remember it? I, I can remember it really well, actually, because it was had nightmares of it many times. Yeah. It was this feeling like I already knew. I already knew that I was going to get caught. Why? I had a dream the night before. Yeah. That I that a I got pre- caught. A premonition. Um, and so, you know, when the police came and looked for me in the gate, I was already at the point of vomiting. Um, and when I was being taken back to custom, I just thought, man, I'm never leaving prison ever. Wow. So you felt physically ill. Yeah. This is this is fascinating for me. Do you know the best thing? Can I, say. Cassie? Can I just say this? That you're now accepting this and to talk about this, and I mean, we'll see this in SAS as well. <clears throat> but I look at you now. You look so healthy. You look. You, there's a glow about you. You found your future soulmate. You've completely changed your life. And a lot of people could go down the other road. You you are. Look, I know that you've made some mistakes, but you are yeah, a, a very do. tough woman. A very tough woman. Yeah, you've done very well. I would imagine that um, even sitting here in the studio now and talking about this, there's part of you that really wants to to move forward and and do more and prove that you're not just the person Mm. that we've seen and then we, you know, um, you find yourself in situations all the time where people want to ask about the day where you were caught and and what was prison like and all of these things. I mean, I guess if you could say anything now... To everybody listening, like who, who else are you? Yeah, who are you? Know, you know, like who, because everybody, it's so easy for everybody to to label who they think you are, and and uh, you know they read articles about you, and this is this is who Cassie is, and this is the nickname we've given her, and this is what she should should and shouldn't be doing. Who? How do you see yourself now, or how would you like to move forward? Because everyone, should, you know, deserves that opportunity. I think. Looking at everything, there's probably not someone who's more determined to move forward from it than myself. I I'm completely motivated to do whatever it takes. I I guess 
I'm mentally strong to the point where I don't stress about anything anymore. Yep. Good. Like if something comes up, I'm just like, well, find a find a solution. That's it. Because I spent so many days in prison where you think, oh, I've got to do this, but I can't do that. I need to do this, but I can't do that because yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Um, and the stress kills you there. Oh. Um, so I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Stop stressing and just fix it. Yep. So I'm completely changed person. I found maturity. I found life experience that I definitely lacked. Um, you, you matured. You yes. grew up. Yeah. Man, definitely. it's the hard it's, way. It's, it's fascinating. But it, I think I needed it. Yeah, of course. Wow. Probably because not in such a brutal no. way. But how, yeah. how old were you when it happened? I was barely 22. Yeah. It's, baby. it's and this is what oh, this is what I get emotional about. Imagine, and everyone can say what an idiot what she did and, and all this kind of stuff. But if that was a cousin or a sister or a or a mm. family member who made that mistake, and we all do make oh, mistakes. I think we've all looked at. Would we you, can all look at our life right now and think, oh, if I just hadn't done that thing, or I wish I could change exactly. that. Yeah. And you just ca- you just can't. And what are you going to do? Die? How do defensive? In the shame how of defensive it? Ca- uh, Cassie's family would have been when she's in a Colombian prison and there's nothing that you can do about it and she's going through all those moments. Well, I think that's probably why like, I couldn't share a lot of details with my family of what I was going through inside mm. because the fear, being a mum or a dad or a sister, listening to, oh, well, she got stabbed today or... Yeah. Mm. Of course. Hmm. The I, torture. I, I couldn't do it. So I kept all this stuff hidden for yeah. so many years, all these emotions, and you're all going to see them come out. In the rawest way, and they say yes. So okay. the desert got flooded with tears. <laughs> yeah, oh, and then it was like headline. we needed some no, we needed not. some water in the desert. Yep, Cassie's here to help <laughs> us out. Um, well, well, I'm proud of you. Cass, well done. Well done. Because well I, I, I know before you walked into this studio, I, we we knew that you're a little bit nervous, but you spoke really well, and I, we're really looking forward to seeing you in this series. Thank you. So appreciate your time. Thank you very much Thanks for coming. Thanks for having in. me. No Thanks, worries. Cassie. Thank, Thank you. Ditsy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great. Comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.